guys, Mina is here and welcome everyone. Today we will be playing with the impartial system inside of Maya to make this water condensation. And also we're going to use some expressions to animate it. And also I'm going to show you how to make this uh, ice cube shape inside of the Alright, so let's get us started. <laughs> So what are we going to do now is make sure that you are under the effects menu. I'm going to select my object under in particles. I'm going to choose emit from object. Open the option box, go to edit reset and for the emitter type make it a surface and for the speed set it to zero. Hit apply and close that. Now if we play as you can see it's being affected by the solver gravity. So we can, of course, uh, ignore it if we came to the imparted shape one. Under the dynamic properties, we can ignore slower gravity. Now, if we replay again, now they are being poured and stuck with the surface of our object. And that's what we want. So the idea now is to emit particles according to a texture. And it's going to be something like that. As you can see, that represents the water drops. So the particles will form the shape of it. So I'm going to show you how to make this texture from scratch in Photoshop and we're going to apply it and use it. Here in Photoshop, what I'm going to do is go to filter menu and under noise, I will add noise. All the way up to 400, press OK. Then I'm going to add a Gaussian Blur to it. So go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, maybe 3 pixels, press OK. Now for the Levels adjustments. Uh, press Ctrl L, open the Levels. And then what we're going to do is to drag the white and the black points together to give us this contrasted, uh, uh, distorted shapes. And there you go, something like that. All right, so let's save this and use it back in Maya. What are we gonna do is to load that texture that we've just made in Photoshop. And to load it, we need to go to the emitter, all the way down to texture emission attribute. I'm going to enable texture rate. I'm going to then uh, load it as a file. And now if we press play, we don't really see much happening. And the reason is the counts. The counts, the number of the particles that are being emitted are very low. So we need to crank this up. So let's just add another two zeros and make this five. Press enter. And now if we hit play, as you can see in particles, now starts to form the shape of each drop according to this map and that's the idea behind the water condensation all right so here we go the second part where we are going to make this in particle uh trails i'm going to select my object make sure that you're on the effects menu under in particles choose emit from object Open the option box for the emitter type, set it to a surface, and press create. Now, if you hit play, the solver gravity will kick in and will drag the particles down. But first, let's change the shading from points to spheres. Let's adjust the particle size and reduce it. Let's make it uh, say 0 0.05. Okay, that looks good to me. Now, in the dynamic properties, we can ignore the solar gravity. Now, if we apply again, the 
particles just appears on the surface. And instead of having the particles just appears on the whole surface of the can, we only need it to appear from the top. And to do that, let's come to the emitter under texture emission attributes and check enable texture rate. Now we can input a texture and that texture will be a ramp. Now, as you can see, the white area here will only emit particles. We can increase the white area a bit more so we can have the right amount of particles. So what we want to do next is making the particles following the object. And to do that, I will choose the in particle first, then the object last, and go to in particles and choose goal. Now, if you apply, the particles are being a little bit weird. And the reason for that is we need to acquire the UV of the object. So to do that, let's go under a mirror basic attributes again and check need parent uv once we have activated that now we can jump to the in particle shape one under pair particle array attributes let's open the general tab now we can add the goal u and the goal v along with uh the parent u and the parent v if we came to the goal V, we can right click and choose creation expression in the creation panel. So I will copy the in particle shape one and paste it over equal that with the parent U. And do the same for the V. So let's copy the whole uh, thing and change the U to V, close it with uh, semicolons. Now hit edit. If we hit play, the particles now will follow the object wherever it goes. Now we need to slide the particles over along with the surface. So to do that, we are going to type a value to move it down, but we are going to write it in the runtime after dynamics since it will be calculated at each individual frame. So let's come to the goal V since now V represents the vertical axis and U represents the horizon, we need the particles move along with the vertical. Choose go V, copy that and let's tab plus equal, say 0.15 and hit edit. Now if you hit play, all right, so what's happening now is they are moving but upwards. So we need to adjust the movement to become down. So let's just add a minus here and that will reverse it. Hit edit again. Now press play. And here we go. It moves down, but very fast. So after many trials, uh, 0.003 give me the speed and the momentum that I need. Next, we will create trails. I will choose in particles and go under in particles and choose emit from object again. Let's create a new solver and instead of surface, let's change it to Omni. Press create and now if you hit play, they are emitting particles, but we need to disable the gravity. So let's change the shading from points to floppy surface and let's adjust the particle size to 0.05 so we need to adjust the radius of the particle stream and we can do that if we came under the pair particle attributes and open general we can add the radius pair particle. We have then uh, the radius pp available to adjust it so we can right click and choose create ramp then right click and choose edit ramp now if you hit play the ramp now affects the radius 
so we can open the connection and adjust some minimum and maximum values. Let's try 0 0.005 for the minimum and 0 0.01 for the maximum. Okay, now the maximum is a very small, so let's make it 0.1. Okay, now we start to see the effect happens. It has the shape of a drop, but it's still huge, so we can keep adjusting the value. Let's make the minimum 0.05. Okay, that's a little bit better, but let's try in the minimum 0.03 and the maximum 0.07 all right i actually like that we can adjust the trail length by adjusting the lifespan of the particles between a random range of 1 and 0.25 okay let's increase the lifespan to 3 and i think that's a good length to start with now if I adjusted the RAM colors, I will have a better look of a drop. So that looks like uh, a good start for the particles uh, for the for the drop, but there are too many particles. So let's go to the emitter and decrease the rate, say to 05. Okay, that's a good amount. Now we have a stream of particles, but they are moving straight down. In real life, or for the particles to be more realistic, the behavior should have a little bit of noise and random movement to it. So, so we need to pull out this behavior by the use of noise expressions. So to do that, I will choose in particle and go all the way down to pair particles attributes. So if I open the runtime after dynamics in the expression editor, I will type a noise expression to control the behavior. Let's say noise open brackets sphere rand open brackets time plus the in particle ID close brackets close brackets and um, semicolons. So this expression will add noise to the trails. So let's press edit and hit play. Okay, now there is something happens, but obviously the noise is too much. It's too strong. So to control these effects, I will I will multiply the whole thing with a value, say it's 0008. As you can see now, the effect is more controllable. It gives me the look and the behavior of a, of a water drop. If we make it 0.15, it will have a bigger effect. Now what we want to do is to convert the particles to polygons. So we can texture it and render them out. So let's go to modify, convert then you choose in particles to polygons. Once you hit that, now we have the particles conversion, but they have lost the shape of it. So to get the shape of the water drop back, we can adjust the values in the output mesh tab. I will increase the mesh smooth conversion to three. And I will increase the max triangles resolution to 300 and the mesh triangle size, the smaller value, the better look. So let's make it 0.1. As you can see, we are getting the shape back. 
but we can decrease even more to 0.50. Okay, let's try 0.001. Okay, I like that. We have brought back the shape. But now we have this sticking point out of the mesh. So we can play with the threshold to bring them back. I think a value of 1 will be enough. And there you go. And check out the second part where we will be texturing and lighting the scene and making the ice cube shader inside of V-Ray. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. My name is Mina and we will see you next time.